19 year old, I was racing my car over the Ang Angeles Crest freeway and the highway. And I was winning. My car was ahead of the Lexus and the Corvette behind me. And, and for a moment, I had the elation of being the fastest car on the road. But the rocks fell out from the rains the night before. And I went to avoid them, big rocks. And I hit the soft shoulder on a left-hand turn and had a power slide. And over about 15 feet, there was a 250-foot drop into a dry dam at the bottom. And for some reason, the car hooked, turned, spun, and stopped against the mountain. The hood of the car was crushed into the mountain and the four wheels were standing out from the mountain, almost like some kind of artistic projectile. And everybody said I was dead at the scene because no one could see me inside the vehicle. They had every emergency vehicle there, two helicopters, they had everything else. The Corvette and the Lexus that was behind me was swearing to the police that I was driving the speed limit because they were as well and they knew. They peeled the car off the mountain, still upside down, and they used the jaws of life to tear the door open. And I was there swinging upside down in a seatbelt. I didn't even have a scratch on me. The sheriff was incredibly upset. He reached inside, grabbed me by the lapel. Somebody cut the, 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 the uh, seatbelt, and they swung me out and put me on my feet. And he goes, you know how many resources are here, and you're not even got a glass cut on your face. And uh, my heart was beating, and some people were cheering, others were frustrated, and I think the ambulance driver was looking for an excuse to practice what he'd learned in school, and I disappointed him. The sheriff said, young man, come with me, and let me show you something. He goes, look at these skid marks. Look at this divot in the road right here. It said something grabbed your bumper and spun you off that cliff or you'd be dead right now. It said not only were you safe here, it says I've never seen somebody come out of a crash like that against the mountain. He said right where you're seated there was a pocket in the side of the mountain and when the ceiling, the roof collapsed, it didn't collapse over your head. And you, he said, I know you had to have been speeding for this to have happened, but he says I've got two eyewitnesses that says that you weren't so I can't give you a ticket. But I'm going to give you a warning. And on the cause of accident, the cause of the rocks that are on the road, it said an act of God. But then he added something to it as well. And he underlined it three times. He goes, the reason why you're standing in front of me today is because of an act of God. You know, as a young man, I pretty proud, pretty overconfident. But God has saved my life on a number of occasions because He has a purpose inside for me to do. I was in India on a missions trip caught, caught in a riot in downtown Delhi. Came out of it without a scratch. Why God still has a plan in store for me. You know, God has a plan for you as well. He holds us even though so many times we push against Him. It says this in the book of Romans. He's about to jump up here on the screen. There we go. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us. The Bible says, even when we were sinners, he left that place of comfort, knowing what he had to do, knowing the pain that was in front of him, but his compassion was for you. Mary Magdalene might have been the only person on the face of the planet where Jesus would have still come and stood between her and the stones being thrown at her and died for her on that cross. Why do you ask? Why are you so important? It's called love. Compassion is love extended. And, and for you to understand love, you have to have been in love before. You know, I, I look at my wife and I fell in love with Michelle and 
Michelle is loving on our children right now over here, but she, Michelle is this first girl I fell hopelessly in love with. And my friends came up to me and said, why are you getting married? Are you nuts? I mean, look at all the fun you're not going to be allowed to have when you get married. But love overcompensated for what they thought was logic. Because I saw something completely different. I saw Michelle as a person I was willing to leave all my life behind for. And I'm just a hopeless romantic that's sometimes an egotistical maniac that God has to slap down off a self-made pedestal. Imagine what God's like. He looked at you and he says, I am in love with this child of mine. I know some of us have had bad experience with parents, but I'm telling you what. He's a parent that never will leave you, never forsake you. He's the parent that stands with you through it all. And even when you turn your back on him, he still faces after you saying, I'm going to be here if you turn around and you need me. That's the kind of God he is. And he saw you. He saw me. He saw David caught in his sin. There's a spiritual law. It's like the law of gravity. Newton found the law of gravity when the apple fell off the tree. The law of gravity is concrete. There's also another law. It's called the law of sin. It's the wages of sin is death. Sin is unholy and it cannot be in the presence of the holy God. But this is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing. This is worth getting excited about. Jesus said, I love Lashonda so much that I am going to come to this earth and I am going to pay the price so I can spend eternity with her. We're going to make it so that the this, this slate can be wiped completely clean and I will take on whatever the enemy has tried to throw at her, whatever the world has tried to throw at her, whatever the world has tried to do against David, even the mistakes David Higgins has made, I will come and I will take that upon myself so I can spend eternity with David Higgins. And that's worth celebrating. 